In ancient times, the trebuchet was used as an expression of power as nations would go to battle. We set out to show that this complicated device does indeed conserve mechanical energy. We decided to redesign the school's previously built trebuchet and perform experiments with it by launching cantaloupes, and then compare our results to theoretical calculations. After a trip to Lowe's to get some wood, we started out on taking down the old design, which is pictured here. We took apart the track in the middle and the back edge and replaced the back with what is shown here with a new beam of wood and redrilled holes. These new holes also threw off the alignment of the device that holds the arm in place before the launch is about to begin. As seen here, we redrilled the holes in order to allow the firing pin to stay in place. Another important addition we made was a new track with curved edges to help the projectile maintain a straight path right before it is launched. Pictured here is a culmination of everything new that we added or worked on. The new firing pin holder is attached to the new back board, which is behind the new track that we built. Another important addition we made was analyzing the location that the bolts were placed in in the previously made design, taking some out of the design that were determined to be extraneous, and adding them back in in other places to add extra support to the system. Unfortunately, due to some drilling errors, our new design was not as sturdy as we had hoped. We spent days adding many, many, many nails into the backboard in hopes that it would add the extra support that we needed. When push came to shove, however, our design was not able to provide the support needed. After one launch, our design was broken and had to be redone. We spent about an hour with Mr. Mulholland completely redoing the back, and our final product can be seen here. In sum, we flipped the backboard over and cut out part of the board to allow for cleaner launch. This second design provided us with capabilities for three more launches and is still in sturdy condition for the future physics students to come. This launch shown right here was our fourth launch and it provided us with the correct camera shots to accurately model the conservation of energy and predict the distance that it would go. So now that you've seen the launch, let's see if we can predict what should happen mathematically. Now we're going to mathematically derive an equation for the velocity of the projectile. Consider the trebuchet here locked in its loaded position, and the trebuchet here, which is at the instant that the projectile is launched. We're going to give both a counterweight of mass m, seen here hanging from the edge of the arm. And we're going to add the projectile, which for our experiment was a cantaloupe of mass lowercase m. Up here it's being launched. And we're also going to assign the arm a moment of inertia of i, which we will talk more about later. And then uh, we are also going to assign the mass's heights. We are going to call the mass of the counterweight um, when it is locked, h1, this is all the way to the ground. The mass of the missile height of the cantaloupe from the ground will be h2. Uh, the mass of the projectile, I mean, excuse me, the mass of the counterweight uh, at launch will be h3. And the mass of the cantaloupe, the instant that it is launched, is H4. Now we're going to take a look at the generic types of energy that are present in the system. We've known all year that mechanical energy is always conserved. That's what we set out to do in this project. Mechanical energy initial is equal to mechanical energy final. And so what does that break down into? At the beginning, we have two types of potential energy. U uppercase M I plus U lowercase M I. That's it. That's all we have at the beginning. But then what does that turn into? We have two types of potential energy also at the instant of launch. We have U uppercase M F because the projectiles, I mean, not the, excuse me, the counterweight is not on the ground. 
and then we have the potential energy of the projectile itself as it is in the air obviously right here and so uh, moving along we have the kinetic energy of the projectile which we will derive the velocity from later that is what we are searching for so kinetic energy little m and then we have the rotational kinetical kinetic energy of the arm which proved to be the toughest part to figure out and we will talk more about that later then we have the uh, rotational kinetic energy of we have the rotational kinetic energy of the projectile itself rotational kinetic energy little m plus um, we are assigning the distance x as car, the cart moves from here to here it moves forward as the trebuchet arm swings around and so obviously it is moving so it has a kinetic energy kinetic energy big M and then we have two types of friction we have the friction on the cantaloupe from here to here as it goes through the slide so work friction slide plus the work of friction on from the ground to the wheels as it travels from here to here And there we have our generic list of energies. More will be later discussed about things that we ignored and assumptions we made, but right now we are going to take out the work of friction of the slide and the rotational kinetic energy of the cantaloupe as this simplifies the math significantly. And any error we find in our results, we will mention that they can be attributed to the possibilities that we ignored the work of friction on the slide and the rotational kinetic energy of the projectile. Something that we forgot to mention was that we are also ignoring the rotational kinetic energy of the wheels of the cart themselves because looking at the math that we found that that would require it made it way too hard considering that not very much energy goes into making that happen so that will also be factored in to our results if we discover that we have amounts of error. So now given the, uh, the energies that we are ignoring, we are left with this equation right here. So let's see if we can derive the equation itself for velocity of a projectile after ignoring the three things that we are ignoring. Potential energy is mgh, so we got big mgh1 plus little m g h 2 equals big M G H 3 plus little m g h 4. So that has our potential energies taken care of. And now we got the kinetic energy of the projectile is obviously 1 half m velocity of that projectile squared. Remember this is what we are solving for right here is that uh, v m squared. And then we have the rotational kinetic energy of the arm. For right now, we're, I'm just going to put I, and we will talk about calculating I in a second. And then we're going to have V, uh, I mean, excuse me, omega squared right there. 1 half i omega squared takes care of that. Knowing that we will be coming back to i later. Kinetic energy of the cart, 1 half m of the cart, uh, and then its velocity squared, and the work of friction of the ground equals the uh, coefficient of friction, kinetic friction between the ground and the wheels times the normal force times the distance of travel, which we already have given a value of x. We're going to talk now about how we generically can calculate the moment of inertia of the arm. Here is the arm with the center of mass located here. The pivot point is going to be located here. 
and the counterweight is not at the very end, but it's close. It is centered on our trebuchet about right here. Remember that this is we are representing the eye at the instant of the launch, which means that there is no weight acting here because the projectile has been ignored. It has already been launched. So the moment of inertia of any uniform rod, and we are assuming that the arm is of uniform density, around its center of mass is 1 twelfth ml squared. Now we're going to move the pivot point from here to here using the parallel axis theorem. We're going to call this a distance d, which then gives us the moment of inertia at that point would be md squared. If this was the, um, if there was no counterweight, this is what the moment of inertia would be. But then we have to do it again. Uh, we're going to say that it is hung, the counterweight is hung here, and we're going to call this distance from the new pivot point to here r, which then gives us m r squared, and this is now our moment of inertia of the arm. Looking back, we're going to plug this back up here for i. So we're going to have one half, and then our i is one twelfth ml squared plus m d squared plus m r squared. That would be times omega squared. Which we'll have right here. And now this truly is our equations our equation for of all the generic forces broken down generically into all of their mathematical values. To simplify the next step, I'm quickly going to change the normal force here to mass of the cart times g. Let's see if we can now generically get an answer for v mathematically. This here is now what the equation looks like after we isolate the kinetic energy of the projectile and I've moved everything else over to the other side. Multiplying the equation through by 2 and dividing by m leaves us with this line here. Taking the square root of both sides leaves us with this generic formula right here. The velocity of the cantaloupe equals the square root of 2 times the mass of the counterweight times gravity times h1 all over the mass of the cantaloupe times 2g h2 minus 2 mass of the counterweight gh3 all over m minus 2g h4 minus the long i equation which we discovered earlier uh, times omega squared all over mass of the cantaloupe minus the mass of the cart times the velocity of the cart at the time of the release squared all over mass of the cantaloupe minus 2 times the kinetic coefficient of friction between the ground and the wheels times the mass of the cart times gravity times the distance that the cart had traveled by the time of the launch all over the mass of the cantaloupe. Whew, and there you have it. Now we're going to quickly talk about the things we assumed and the things that had to be ignored in order to make the math behind this experiment possible. First, we assumed that the arm has uniform linear density to allow us to calculate a reasonable mass and a moment of inertia for the arm. We also are going to assume that the rope and net are massless and therefore not applying a torque to the arm. And we also are going to assume that the wheels all three wheels support the same weight of the uh, the trebuchet proportionally, which is definitely not true, but it had to be done in order for us to do math that would use friction. Uh, we had to assume that friction acts equally upon all three of the wheels, and then to get our distance calculations, we had to assume that the launch takes place on a flat surface. Last thing we assumed was that angular acceleration of the arm and the linear acceleration of the cart are a constant over extremely small intervals of time. We had to assume this in order to use the computer program to be able to track 
uh, the estimated velocities of the angular velocity and velocity of the cart during the launch. I'm briefly going to run through the things that we also ignored in order to make the math doable. First thing we ignored was the rotational kinetic energy of the cantaloupe upon release. We had to assume that it was not rotating. If you look at the high speed, you can tell it definitely is, but our research determined that because the axis of rotation was not the same, the math became beyond our level of being able to do it, so we had to ignore it. We also ignore the rotational kinetic energy of the trebuchet's wheels as it is moving because the math behind getting the moment of inertia for a tire uh, was very, very complicated and beyond anything we had done or learned in this class. And then we also had to ignore air resistance for the distance calculation. Now we will discuss how we calculated the mass of the arm for the trebuchet. This is a pictorial representation of the arm. And what we did was set up a counterclockwise equals clockwise torque equation. And the clockwise torque is produced by the mass of the bar that acts at a distance little r from the pivot point. And the bar is what held the weights in place. And we estimated it to be 7 kilograms through weighing a third of it having, and then multiplying by about 3. Then the counterclockwise torque is produced by the mass of the arm from the and it acts at a distance big D from the pivot point. And then the other counterclockwise torque is the mass M that we hung off of the end in a plastic bag at a distance X from the pivot point. Solving for the mass of the arm, you get mass of the bar of the, that held the weight plates times little r minus mass masses that were held off the end times X all over big D. For plugging into the equation, we have 7 times 0.79, 7 kilograms times 0.79 meters minus little m times 1.62 meters all over 0.35 meters. And we found little m to be about 1.25 kilograms after we tried to balance the arm and see what set counter equal to clock. And then Plugging that 1.25 in, we find that the mass of the arm is going to be approximately 10 kilograms. You may be asking yourself, how in the world were they able to calculate values for H3, H4, which were the heights of the weights and the projectiles during, at the instant of the launch, the omega of the arm, and the velocities of the projectiles and the carts at the time of the launch? How could they have done that? Well, we use this really cool program shown here, a screenshot is shown here, called Tracker, which allowed us to take our high-speed footage and measure uh, to scale different parts of the movement. We nailed a meter stick to the trebuchet, and then we assigned that uh, distance, the length of a meter, and then the computer was able to tell us how far... Um, other distances were and given knowing the frame rate we were able to calculate how long it took for different things to go different places etc and at the same time in the purple here you can see we have an axis co a coordinate plane system this allowed us to do trigonometry to determine the components of different vectors in order to determine if the computer modeling was an acceptable method of getting an accepted value, we measured the angle that the projectile was launched and calculated the velocity that the computer showed it as being launched, and then com combined some motion equations and a couple of trigonomic concepts to determine the theoretical distance that the projectile should be launched and compared it to the actual distance that we found it to be launched and measured, and we decided that if the distances were close, the theoretical to the actual, then the computer was accurately modeling the velocity and our tests that we were doing to determine those velocities were valid. So here we have the equation that we derived for the velocity of the projectile and underneath here we have the numbers plugged in from both measurements of the actual trebuchet that we took or estimates that we got from the computer program. Uh, here we have the mass in kilograms of the counterweight, 154.22 times 9.8 times H1, which we measured to be 2 meters, uh, times 2 all over 2, which is the mass of the cantaloupe, times 2GH became 2 times 9.8 times H2, which we measured to be 0.415 meters, 
minus 2 mgh3 over m2 times, again, the mass of the counterweight times g times h3, which we used the computer program to estimate, and divided that by 2, the mass of the cantaloupe, minus 2 gh4 became minus 2 times 9.8, times H4, which was the height of the cantaloupe when it was launched, which we used the computer program to give us a value of 3.8 meters, minus um, omega squared times all the parallel axis theorem stuff all over M, which became, uh, we got omega, uh, uh, omega the angular velocity. We used the computer program again to estimate that roughly and after some thought experiments and measurements we got 3.93 radians per second and we square that as the equation dictates and then we in 112 mal squared became 112 the mass was uh of the arm is 10 as we showed earlier times the length of the arm is 2.54 squared plus ma d squared which is 10 times 0.35 squared this is the distance that the rotation axis was moved, plus 154.22, uh, which is the mass, again, in kilograms of the counterweight, times 0.9 squared, which is the, ma uh, the distance of the counterweight away from the new rotation point, all divided by 2, the mass of, which is the mass of the cantaloupe, minus the kinetic energy of the uh, cart, which we es we completely estimated uh, based on some thought experiments, the mass of the cart to be about 400 kilograms. That includes the counterweight um, times the velocity, which we used the computer program to estimate, which came out to be about 0.8 meters per second at the time of launch. So 0.8 squared all over two, the mass of the cantaloupe. And then we have the work done by friction, which is two mu mcgx over m uh, to two, the mu was estimated to be 0.35. We did some research online for uh, the kinet uh, kinetic coefficient of friction between the neuronormal wheel and the ground times the mass of the cart, which is 400, or which we already said it was estimated to be 400, times g, which is 9.8. And we to get x, we used the computer program again to give us a rough value of 0.35. I know it's kind of hard to see there. And divided that all by 2. So for this particular launch with these measurements um, taken from the computer program for launch number four, we got an estimated launch velocity of 23.38 meters per second. In the end, we are quite pleased with our results. Even though our actual value is a very, very rough estimate based on computer data. And for our estimated th theoretical value, we used many other rough estimates, including guessing on the mass of the cart. We are pleased with, to have only an 11.5% error. Considering all the things that we ignored, which certainly contribute significantly to this error, especially the rotational kinetic energy of the projectile and the wheels on the moment of release. We call the, our experiment a success, and we conclude our video by showing all four launches and compiling them with the live speed followed by the high speed footage. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching.